The S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100. Now, when we look at all the data, tomorrow we have PPI, which should stack on top of CPI. Now, I will say PPI traditionally comes out much better than CPI. Okay, I'm going to say that. I'm not going to say it's going to come out amazing, but something you should keep it on track. Now, we saw some of this downside, but bears and sellers cannot show continuation. What do I mean? You get initial volume, but they can't continue on. They can't keep pushing you down. You just kind of flatline and then you bounce back up, right? And that's the problem is signs of continuation. That's basically what we've seen going back to October, right? Sellers take, you know, they, they take some effort and then they fall apart and then it comes back and then they fall apart. And it's like a never ending cycle back and forth. So when we look at the market, you have to be unbiased. And so there's key levels we're watching. There's key levels of the upside and the downside. And that's where we're watching right now. But we also had some monster stock plays on the day that I believe have some real continuation possibilities and some plays of the downside that also have real potential. Now, before we jump into too much, I do want to go over some data first before we start jumping the gun. Now, I will say Thursdays have been one of our better days when it comes to the week. And then also too, when we go over volume in here in a second, but Thursdays and Fridays are typically our green days along with Mondays, Tuesdays and Wednesdays are more coin flips, if you will, over the past year, just looking purely at data. Then you go into something like volume. And you can see volume usually is upticking throughout the end of the week with Friday really dominating that volume. So looking at both these signs and looking at continuation, it looks like we might get our peak here on the week once again on a Friday. Again, this is Edgeful. The link is down below if you want to check these guys out. But when we go back here to ES and we go look at some like the two hour and the four hour, what a recovery indeed. Tuesday, Wednesday are lows. Thursday, Friday, potentially our highs. Once again, you go to last week again, Wednesday, Tuesday, your lows. Thursday, Friday, strength of the week. Again, so the data really playing out here. Data is something that we really need to be keeping an eye on, okay? But now we're pushing back up and you broke above some big levels. Back above 50-50, you're probably pushing back into all-time highs if PPI just goes mediocre, just goes kind of good. Doesn't need to go perfect, just needs to kind of be okay. That's all we really need here, okay? That's the one thing that we're watching right now is can we get continuation? Can we break above 50-66? which if this comes out, you're most likely gonna get. Now the NASDAQ, again, a little bit less here, right? Let's, let's just get rid of some of these levels or just for all the day trading views that we're watching. But again, you can see we're still making those higher lows. As you can see, you zoom out, you did have some wicks, but ultimately holding those higher lows and continuing to push up as well. So despite you know sellers trying to step in, you're right there again at the tip, right there again, trying to break out. Um, so again, things that you have to be viewing and looking out for, in my opinion, and this is what I'm looking at here on NQ. So again, we do have CPI or PPI coming out tomorrow, which will be at 7:30 an hour before market open. But again, I'm going to tell you right now, you're pretty illiquid almost into 18 K. So I'd be, would not be surprised if in the overnight session, we start working our way into this before PPI even hits. So definitely keep this on the top of your chart, be watching NQ, be watching ES, because right now you look very bullish, ES specifically, and even the Dow, the Dow getting in on the party. The last thing I will mention here too is IWM breaking back over highs that we had on Monday, again, Tuesday, Wednesday dip, but bouncing back here and trying to break back over highs that we had, you know, here in December, you know, already back at those highs. So this is all risk on metric that you have to be looking at, right? Now this could come back to affect, you know, banks and housing and things along those lines if the inflation reports aren't good enough for the Fed, right? But we're going to go over those here in a second, but let's talk real quick. Okay, so really quick, when we look at some of the major issues, we look at what's happening with banking, what's happening uh, with the housing market. Now, the biggest things that we're watching here are the 30-year yields and what's happening with interest rates in the longer run. Now, if things go according to the Fed's viewpoint that we're probably going to cut around May, maybe June. Early summer is what I've been anticipating for the past year and a half. That would make the most sense. That's when like the 12-month data pool will be done. And so we need to wait and see really what Fed Powell says. All the other Fed members have been back and forth, no real clear direction. So I'm definitely paying close attention to that. But when I look at what's happening from just how the market's interpreting this so far, is IWM is back at highs. Bitcoin is ripping. Um, you know, mid cap, small cap starting to get some to get some volume there. These are risk on metrics. DXY pulling back. I had the breakout, but it's pulling back. So these are risk on metrics for sure. The 30 year yield is still, you know, high, but again, this is what I'm looking at. It's like, man, the market kind of just doesn't care. This could eventually come back and hurt the market. But in the short term, you have to say to yourself, you know, I got to take advantage of what's you know in front of me. So we're going to look at that data really quick, but go into the mentality of, you know, you don't always got to respect that, right? 
You know, sometimes the, you might have signs, but overall the market is telling you something completely different. That's why it's important that we're using all of our indicators together and not just hyper focused on one thing. Because if I only focused on the dollar rising and then that wasn't for me to go short, I'd lose money a lot of the time as well. So you have to use these in tangent with the key levels and supply and demand level. Number one, we're gonna go to yields overall. The daily, you can still see it. People ask me questions on this every day and I, and I, I, I don't really know why. I don't know what there's to ask. You're sitting in your range still 4.4 down to 4%. Below 4%, you're mega bull, bullish across the board. Banks are healthy. Housing market is back. You're going to see fireworks if that ever happens. But as you trend up, it's a cause for concern. So that's the one thing that's concerning here. But I go back into DXY and DXY has been pulling back over the past two days now, one, two. If you break back below 104.18, you know, I think you're going back to the 200 and a little bit lower. The inverse head and shoulder has played out. But now it's like, is this is are we done here? Right. Because there's a little bit of confusion here. And that's the thing you have to be watching. And so that's what leads me to be concerned. And as I said, with IWM, a great risk on versus risk off metric, you know, you're breaking back out. The last time this happened, you know, we made a lot of money on small and mid caps. So definitely watching this as well with, you know, DXY and yields cooling off also. So when we hear the Fed talk, you need to have your head on a swivel. It's also worth mentioning Jerome Powell will be talking, I believe, Powell, March, I think, 6th in front of Congress. He did the same thing last year. Um, so just know that March 6th this year, he will be talking as well. I can't find the specific announcement of it, but March 6th, March uh, 5th, around that date, he will be talking in front of Congress. Just know that. I want that to be you know out there. Make sure you're paying attention. The news was announced today. So definitely be watching out for that in the upcoming days and weeks. But the 30 year yield still looks fine. You're in the range. You're coming back down into it. There's no real cause for concern for myself. You know, the 10 year, Again, you know, still up there rejecting from 2022 highs, five years, still fine. The two years, still fine as well. Those aren't pumping or anything crazy there either. So again, that's what I'm watching. I would be watching oil too, to see if we could reject off the 200 SMA. Hopefully that happens and we push back down and it will help data overall as well. This is the part of the video that, I, you know, I love. We go over equities and stocks in the major setups. And that's what we're talking about right now. We're going to go over Tesla. That was our big winner from yesterday. I've been saying this on repeat. And I encourage you guys, right? It's not just the stock or the equity. It's also on top of what's happening with futures. Okay, so we want to track the way future trading, trade the trend, but ultimately watch our key levels to break and get that break and retest in specific, specific directions. Now, two stocks we mentioned last night. Tesla above 194. Netflix above 576, fireworks, fireworks, fireworks. And we had Meta as well. Let's jump into those. Now, right now our Discord is closed, so I do want to like say that, but like we try to give you guys as many plays as possible either way. Now we've been talking about kind of the flag you were in here on, on Netflix. You broke above 576, 575.8. And now you're ripping into 600 like anticipated. So congratulations if you caught that move. Chip probably has sold there. Tesla. Again, I posted this on Twitter. If you don't follow on Twitter, then, you know, do whatever you want. I don't care, but don't complain or ask about levels because we post it for free. We texted it on our Discord because the Discord, we do now do text alerts as well if you're signed up for that. And then also we posted this here as well, right? So again, what happens? You break above this level and you run now into 200 and you're going to probably fill that gap tomorrow into 206, 205. So congratulations. And again, just to highlight as well, you know, some of those discord spots will open up beginning of the month, like we always do, but we like to keep it closed. But again, just easy, easy money. It's not about taking a crazy amount of trades. It's about taking high quality trades. That's the biggest thing that I can say. So again, the proof is there for you. So when I'm watching this, that's what I'm looking at in the broad market right now. Those are my favorite names are ripping. Those are my number ones. Now in the after hours, you also had Apple. So Apple just announced something big. So Apple just announced something uh, to rival chat GPT. Okay. Brand new news. It just came out. Uh, don't shoot the messenger. Actually, it's not even going to be on the news yet. It's on our news bot. So let me go really quick into this. So here in the after hours, really quick, let me just paste that, paste that there. So I can jump to it right there. Apple ready's AI tool to rival Microsoft's GitHub and Copilot. So again, very interesting, especially with the new release of Apple vision pro Apple in the after hours is popping up over this. You're back at the 200. You want to see a mount of that level. And hopefully you can go long. If you break above 187, back to the upside of 190. Okay, so that's what I'd be looking at there as well. Okay, so Apple, interesting, definitely heating up. Meta. Now, what did we say yesterday on Meta? There's two levels we've been watching overall. 
we said the level here at 469, you mount that, you're bullish. We said that, right? You ended the day right here at 473. That was your daily close. You opened up there today. Then our next level was 473.5. You broke up, you gapped up, you retested, you mounted, and you went to you know the next level, Valhalla, right? Just absolutely ripping. Again, all these levels have been here for free. The past few days and weeks, we haven't changed a single thing, okay? So again, it's all at your fingertips if you want to take advantage, right? I can't do the work for you. You pay attention. I think we provide so much content here. So you are always ready here in the market. Now, again, I'll run through a few others at the end of the day here. You know, we had Microsoft pushing back over. It couldn't never really mount 407. So you get back over 407, you're happy. But until then, not super interested under that, not looking to trade. Amazon, same levels, got to mount 171, like I keep saying, one, two, three rejection. Until then, you can't trade it. AMD still looks great above 174.7. You can also see like on the daily, you have a little bit of a pennant that's kind of breaking out here. I don't want to go back over that, but you can see you're trying to break out there as well. Looks good. Doesn't look bad at all. Um, AVGO running back into highs looks very strong as well. Nothing crazy, but I've already gone over a lot of the names I would like. I don't want to harp on names that I just kind of like I'm okay with. The names I've liked I've already gone over, so I don't want to spend too much time there, right? Um, Nef, NVIDIA trying to get back over VWAP. If NVIDIA can hold above 735, you're probably pushing back into all-time highs. SMCI just keeps doing its thing every single day. Um, the craziest stock I've ever seen in my life. Uh, this is the definition of a gamma squeeze if I've ever seen one. Uh, but again, that's what I'm looking at here in the market. Last one, Coinbase just reported earnings at 191. Um, had a good feeling that they were going to beat. You are up almost $30 in the after hours. Congratulations. We told you guys bye, bye, bye when you held above 132. Congratulations if you did so. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good one.